Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, it's good to got, good to have you today. Uh, we're joined by one of our nutrition coaches here at Red Dot Fitness. We've got Stephen Brennan in the house. Stephen, welcome to the show, dude. What's up? I'm fired up to be here. It's good to have you, man. I mean, we've had some pretty good conversation lately about lots of things, and uh, it's finally good to get you into the studio and kind of dig into some of the stuff we nerd out about. Yeah, I'm fired up, man. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> Uh, one of those things we were talking about the other day, or one one of the things I was specifically talking about the other day before we came in, is I was like, "Hey, what what are what are people kind of really thinking about? What are they really what are they really going after uh, these days with regard to all the things that are coming at them?" And I had told the story about how we'd been away and done a lot of traveling, uh, both as a team and individually, to do some training, do some educational events. Uh, and that these were three, two and three day, like intensive events, like eight, 12 hours a day and how important, uh, the nutrition and the physical preparedness was physical and mental preparedness was for going into these events so that, and I felt like I really got everything I possibly could have gotten out of it. Uh, and then on the back side of that coming on, and that was on each of those events. Sorry, I don't mean to get off track here, but then on the back end of that, where I would generally be. Um, I'm very, uh, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a processor. So I like to, you know, I sit back, I kind of replay things. I try to analyze things. I'm pretty analytical that way afterwards going, Hey, what, what did I learn? Let me take a note. I'm constantly jotting things down either in my head or in my phone or reviewing things, going back to my notes, uh, to try and continue to process the information. I, if I'm going to take the time, the energy and the effort to put in and finance for that matter, to, to go to an event or learn a new skill or go to a, go to something where I want to enjoy or I need to, I need to take in everything or I want to be switched on for, for lack of a better term. That doesn't end for me in the, the one day, two day, three day event. Like I want to take away from that. And what I recognized after a couple of these events is how like mentally fatigued. I mean, I was just trashed. Um, I, and when I say trashed, I mean like there just was no bandwidth left uh, for me to really do anything, let alone try and, yeah just trying to reprocess stuff. Like it wasn't happening. I was, it was like, I just got to worry about getting on the next airplane or making sure like, did I bring enough underwear in my suitcase, you know, for the trip that we're on this week? You know, it's like you, you, you get reduced to like this lizard brain. Yeah. Uh, Primitive. Right. It's pretty primitive. And, 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 and so this kind of brought us to this conversation today where I want to talk about the topic of nootropics and how those come into play in terms of aiding you through maybe some of these challenging, more challenging times. When I say challenging, I don't mean like I'm struggling, you know, to get through and my memory is fucked and I, you know, I'm having that, that, that probably, that's probably learning that there's a lot of other things, but how do you, how do you come in with maybe a little bit of a mental edge into some of these circumstances, but whether it be through approaching your day to day, maybe it's going into a new learning environment where you're trying to you know, just again, like I mentioned, get as much out of it as you can and perform, which is a whole nother thing. So uh, Steven, I know you're a bit of a nerd on this stuff and you've done some Instagram posts for us Mm -hmm. about nootropics, but, um, let's talk about it. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with you and just turn it over and go, dude, what are nootropics for the person that's never heard of these things before? What are they? How do they work? All that stuff. Uh, so yeah, nootropics are basically more or less smart drugs or smart compounds. Um, I think what comes to mind in popular culture recently, uh, the, uh, the Bradley Cooper movie, the limitless, um, right. you know, he's got the, uh, the magic pill where he can yeah. learn a language in five minutes or can suddenly play the violin or, you know, this, this, uh, this incredible key to expanding his mental, uh, capacity. Um, unfortunately such a drug does not exist. Um, but, um, no tropics basically are going to uh, help improve your cognitive function. Okay. And go ahead. So I was just going to say, I've heard the, I think, but like the root of the term nootropics basically is to bend the mind is to re or change the mind. Like, so it's like new tropic. I think that's what it means. I mean, because well, a lot of them are released and you know, this factor that helps the brain uh, create new neural pathways and stuff. Yeah. So I think what's what we're going to get into, but, it, it, but the, I think the, the way you just explained it there in terms of like expanding the mind, right? And turning or switching things on and allowing the functions, the function that the brain has, the nervous system has in order to process, take in, process, and then deal with information could be enhanced with nootropics, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think um, a way to kind of think about it is removing some of the 
uh, blockages that you may be experiencing. If you've ever had that, uh, that experience where you're like, wait, what's that word? What was that? It's kind of on the tip of my tongue. I'm not, I can't quite mm. access the information. <laughs> that I all the know. time. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I know it's in here somewhere, but I can't quite grasp it. It's, a, I can't find the file. Um, so, uh, nootropic, uh, compounds can, um, you know, help guide you in, in so the filing sense. cabinet. Yeah. yeah get yeah, you there. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, I think that's a really good way of looking at it too. Um, so I've had some experience with nootropics and it's, uh, you, you mentioned them as like a drug, right? Mm -hmm. And, and in some cases there are drugs that are also nootropics. Mm -hmm. So like one of the things I like to look at when I, or whenever I'm talking about supplements with people like dietary or performance supplements, whatever they happen to be, there's always this fine line of, you know, when does this get into the medical realm or the pharmaceutical realm? And then you know, when is it in the supplement realm? And then where does it fall into the nutraceutical realm, which we've talked about on this show before? And so without confusing people, there there are drugs, like, and these are uh, regulated by the FDA, uh, that are nootropic type drugs. Um, some that, and, and for different things. Like if you've got um, dementia, if, you, if you're suffering from dementia, or you're suffering from memory loss, there are, there are, there are drugs that are, that are uh, put out there to, or that you can take to help with this. Mm -hmm. um, you've got ADHD. There's drugs that you can you can take to to help you with this. Uh, so it, the the whole concept has been around. We're just talking about more of the naturally based, plant based uh, stuff rather than anything that's been cooked up, mm -hmm. so to, so to speak, in a lab. Well, yeah. I mean, there's um, you know, nootropics can come from several different. Uh, several different areas. You have nootropic medicinal mushrooms, you have amino acid based, you have herbs. Um, it can come from a number of different areas. Um, there are, um, I guess we can jump right to it. There are sort of gray area nootropics that are more or less like the SARMs of cognitive enhancers that were basically failed research chemicals um, that you can find in kind of the shady corners of the SARMs? internet. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, selective androgen receptor modulators. So kind of not quite full on anabolics, but uh, definitely a little more potent than creatine. Fake steroids. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's an interesting mm -hmm. concept that came up several years ago. Very, very popular. A few studies got done. When I say a few, actually quite a few studies got done. And there was a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions still about, you know, how impactful or how... Uh, how productive can you really be with these things and does it really help you or could it potentially be exacerbating an underlying, you know, hormonal condition? We talk about androgen receptors. We talk, we're talking about the, the, the main sex characteristics like testosterone or estrogen and the binding properties that your body has in terms of either onboarding the right ones or potentially onboarding the, I'm going to say the wrong ones in air quotes that will, that will 100% dictate what happens with those hormones going down the pathway. And uh, we don't have to get into all that stuff today. But the, the point of it is, was this was kind of just happened on. And uh, there was a lot of people selling these things, making a lot of money on them. And at the end of the day, we found out, mm, maybe these things aren't so great. Uh, from a safety perspective, like a health safety perspective, not a, like you take them, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. But certainly like you could be aromatizing more than actually getting, you know, the benefit out of it. So anyhow. Um, yeah. And in, in a similar fashion, things like racetams, um, you really can overdo it with them. And also when it's a gray area type of, uh, we'll call it a product, um, you don't really know where it's coming from. You don't really know how it's being manufactured. And there certainly is a fine line between um, just enough to achieve some benefits and too much um, that's going to cause restlessness, anxiety, you can literally burn out your neurotransmitters. So, um, for the, uh, for the lay person, probably best to stick to the more naturally occurring cognitive enhancers. I think it makes sense. I mean, I think most people can get their head around and probably not, not, I mean, I guess you could debate it if it's been highly studied and people have figured it out, but I just like to kind of, I think when it's coming from the earth, generally speaking, we can, we can have a little bit more, uh, we can be a little bit more liberal in terms of our, our approach to it. A little more confident. Yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and at the same time, staying confident. But anytime there's money to be made mm -hmm. uh, in any of these kind of things, things can get kind of weird. And going back to the SARMs and uh, the Racetams, which will come up later, I think, in this conversation, that's kind of one of those things. Mm -hmm. So um, 
look, nootropics are not a new topic. They've been around for a long time. Again, obviously in the pharmaceutical and medical world, but certainly in the in the world of performance enhancement. And I mean, when I say performance enhancement, I mean brain performance or cognitive performance as well as physical or physiological performance. Um, and you're finding these things or bits and pieces of these things in a lot of products. So it's not generally that people are taking these on their own. And we'll talk about the different, some of the different products that, or sorry, the different types of nootropics that we really like. And then Steven and I talked about talking about today, but cause there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, but the, the point of that is, is you're, like, you're starting to see them be introduced into things like pre-workout uh, and, it, and that being a big one. And I think there's some, there's some validity to that. Or there could be some, some, uh, there's, there's some good stuff certainly in that for sure. Uh, but at the same time, you know, why are we putting it in there? What are the dosages? Uh, are you getting dosed right? Like, is it really a quality product? Where's it actually coming from? We've talked about supplements on the show before. I think those are questions that all need to be asked. And, and without getting too far into that rabbit hole on which brand you buy versus the other brand, cause we're not going to do that today. Like, let's talk about the, some of the basic uh, nootropics that we know about out there that have been pretty well studied and have a good foundation of kind of uh, knowledge behind them and how, what they are, how they help, and uh, and when and how and who might use them. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, I mean, if we're on the topic of pre workouts, uh, we we're you know in our uh, in our little pregame we uh, mentioned Alpha GPC. Right. Alpha GPC is coming up a lot in pre workouts. I feel like that was kind of the first one that yeah. I would see on a regular basis that is uh, purportedly going to enhance both cognitive function as well as physical performance as well. Yeah, and you're again, you're seeing it kind of everywhere. It's very popular because we know a lot about it at this point or quite a bit about it at this point. I mean, it's kind of in, in everything. And one of the things about it before we get a little bit kind of how it works and what it does uh, is it's very safe. So you're you're probably not going to OD on alpha GPC. I mean, you're finding everything. I mean, we're we're seeing it in like just these these Jocko goes we're drinking. There's alpha GPC in these uh, because of the uh, cognitive benefit and the performance benefit that they bring to things. Um, but let's talk about it. Like, what is it? How does it work? Where do you find it? Like, what's up with alpha GPC? Uh, so alpha GPC is it's basically a uh, choline donor. So uh, choline is neither a vitamin or a mineral. It's something in between. Uh, it's naturally occurring in the brain, um, but we are going to get more choline from things like eggs, things like beef, chicken breast. Um, we do need to consume uh, some choline. Uh, so alpha GPC uh, basically works by increasing acetylcholine in the brain. Um, and there is uh, some, uh, some research or some suggestions that it might increase power output, that it might uh, actually increase growth hormone production. Mm -hmm. um, so I've actually seen it in some products that are, yeah, uh, supposed to increase, uh, you know, growth hormone, you know, get huge with alpha GPC and arginine and, you know, some other, uh, some other naturally occurring uh, compounds that are uh, supposed to increase growth hormone naturally. Yeah. So that, that's a big one. And that's, you know, obviously people latched right on that. Oh shit. Well, I can get more GH out of this. <laughs> Give me yeah. some alpha GPC, right? Uh, that's I, I, more, more needs to be, to be studied to, to actually understand the, the result of that. You know, how is it being studied? Who's studying it? Mm -hmm. What is it being studied on? Is this fucking rats or you know, is it cows or what is it? What is it? Uh, the other thing, but for people to maybe wrap their, kind of wrap their head around how you might kind of feel uh, with a little alpha GPC in you would be similar to the effects, uh, like the cognitive effects you might feel from caffeine. Uh, very similar in that sense. So maybe a heightened sense of awareness, a heightened sense of focus. Um, the different, one of the main differences between the two would be that alpha GPC is going to make you feel jittery, anxious, elevate. Yeah. It's a non-stim. Mm. So going back to the pre-workout conversation and, you know, and kind of where people are, where you're finding a lot of alpha GPC, a lot of it's in these in pre-workouts, but if you're getting a good non-stim pre-workout, you're going to find alpha GPC in it. So you're going to get the same type of benefit from a, again, a mental clarity, uh, potential help with, with, with the release of uh, with with growth with growth hormone, but this intense sense of focus that you may you might find that you get with with caffeine again, basically without getting the jitters. Yeah, you can kind of almost mimic a stimulant effect 
without the stimulants. So without the risk of anxiety, without feeling tweaked out, um, that's kind of in a good non-stim pre-workout. I look for a good focus blend or a good focus component because you can almost feel stimulated in the same way caffeine or other stimulants might work, but without the caffeine. Yeah. Was, so you're question. not, yeah. So you're not getting like the adrenal fatigue or mm -hmm. let's just say, I don't want to say fatigue. That's stretching it. You're not getting the adrenal response that you would get from potentially get from caffeine and you, people that drink coffee or have been off coffee for a while and then come back onto the coffee or just get that super, you know, amped up, you Pump know, thing. uh, you know, I don't know, latte or whatever they're, they're getting with the, with the, uh, with, with the espresso in it, you, you know what that feels like. You, you, you get the jitter, your hands are shaking like, holy shit. Right. You yeah, don't get that with the a little too fast. Yeah, yeah. The alpha is different. So it's also the difference between the two. Like a lot of people say that caffeine's a nootropic. It's not mm -hmm. a nootropic over time does not need more. I was just going to ask about that as far as when you consume a nootropic, because I'll be quite honest, you know, nootropics for me, th that's really outside my wheelhouse. So when anybody has any kinds of questions about that, I'm always like, well, you should probably talk to Scott. You should talk to Jeff and now you. So um, that was kind of my question as far as when you consume the nootropic, um, is there... Is there a point where you can do too much to where you're desensitized to it like you would be Build with caffeine? Tolerance. You need more yeah. and more, right? Yep. Building a tolerance. <clears throat> well, I mean, any good uh, nootropic compound should have uh, compounding benefit over time. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, as far as like overdosing or taking too much, you're probably going to get a headache. That's yeah. about the worst thing that's going to happen. Um, but Building a tolerance, that's not something that I've experienced. And there are some nootropics that I've taken for extended periods of time. Yeah. yeah. If you overdo it, you're just like, ah, you know, a little yeah. too much blood flow getting in my head. I got a headache, but that's about as bad as it gets. Yeah. That's a really good point you brought up there, Jeff, just in terms of like the cumulative benefit that you get from the nootropic, particularly from the alpha GPC. We're going to move into another one in a second, which I really want to kind of, I will really center in on kind of what you're talking about uh, with a compounding benefit over time and actually getting better versus with caffeine, which has been referred to as a nootropic. And I think, you know, in some camps are, they're going to call it that, but to your point, like you can, you can, you can develop a resistance to it and, and even an intolerance to it. Uh, I mean, when they first came out, it was taught that like nootropics specifically are not supposed to inc have to increase over time. And that's why caffeine is not one of them. Yep. But yeah. Yep. So, that brings us to maybe the next one, which is going back to brain function and uh, the benefit over time that it can bring uh, is lion's mane. Can we talk about that one? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Great. I mean, that's definitely one that has a cumulative benefit over time. I take lion's mane every day, 500 milligrams. I have been taking lion's mane every day for close to three years now. Um, same thing, as I mentioned before, you take a little too much, you might get a headache. That's about it. Um, but lion's mane is particularly valuable in that it helps uh, promote both uh, BDNF, so brain-derived neurotropic factor, as well as nerve growth factor. So these are proteins that are going to stimulate uh, new cell growth in the brain, neurogenesis, and they also strengthen existing cells. So over time, these are actually helping create new brain cells and actually helping expand your mental capacity, as well as being neuroprotective as well. So over time, prevent your brain from oxidative damage, yeah. just from general decay. And we got a lot of brain decay <laughs> in, <laughs> our, yeah. in our society yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> Seems I, I see quite a few decayed <laughs> brains or <laughs> decaying you know, brains. A lot of the Alzheimer's uh, mm -hmm. studies they're doing right now yep. that it's reducing plaque. Uh, yep. Amyloid plaque. Yeah, there's a t so there's a ton of research around lion's mane, actually, uh, and quite a bit of, quite a bit of, uh, journal kind of and peer reviewed research on it. And it has some interesting things that are coming out. And, and you just touched on the, the major ones there being a regenerative, but also a protective mechanism that stimulates a particular type of protein that can protect the cell. So for people that are listening to us right now, they're going, dude, you guys are, this is way too sciencey. Like this is, this is crazy. Um, like I'm, I'm getting bored and you guys are losing me. Well, think about it this way. Well, and, and let me add this before I, I say that, make that statement. And that is, if you are already in a state of cognitive decline, deep cognitive decline, you're probably not going to get a lot of benefit out of this. You might, and that's what they're studying now. Like, what can we bring back from a, uh, from a neurological perspective in terms of regrowth? And what can we um, reduce in terms like of an inflammation or that decay or that plaque that might, might exist there? Probably too soon to tell. 
Um, but this is something that people can benefit by, healthy individuals can benefit by to help reduce their risk of running into these things down the line. So you're just saying, hey, I take it every day, right? Mm -hmm. I, I take it every day. It's just like taking your creatine. You should be taking your creatine every day, not just around your, um, your, your, your workouts. So if your lines, the only time you're getting your lines made is in your pre-workout and you only take your pre-workout on workout days or when you feel like you need it in your workout days, that's the equivalent of taking your creatine the same way, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever, right? You, you need to have it in, or you want to have it in your system. Um, so, I, you know, I guess going back, like, why should I be listening to this? Well, because there is a ton of research around the cognitive benefit in terms of feeling and getting sharper uh, while uh, from a performance perspective. So if cognitively you're switched on more, that is your brain is has a higher level or a higher ability to take in process and then react to send the proper signals back out so that your body can react appropriately to whatever the stimuluses are. Again, maybe it's the weightlifting workout that you're going for, for you're going through for the day. Maybe it's the, um, uh, the jujitsu, you know, uh, practice that you're going through. Maybe it's sitting in that college classroom. I was going to say just studying, yeah, right? Studying, <laughs> getting through a big project yeah. that you have for work. Or work Maybe focused, that yeah. fucking air traffic controller that's out there in charge of like the, you know, our aerospace here. That shit's important. Mm -hmm. Like I want you switched on and I would want to be switched on and, and not living off, you know, 50 cups Caffeine. of coffee and, a cig and cigarettes, you know, and kind of to get through it. So that I think maybe brings a little bit more practicality into it. Um, so the, 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 the thing about, the thing people, I think people are like, well, what is lion's mane? What the fuck is this shit? It's a mushroom, mm -hmm. right? It, it's a mushroom. It's a it, pretty mushroom, actually. Yeah. You ever see it? it does actually look like a lion's mane, hence it, the name. It's yeah. like, it's fluffy. It's, uh, it's naturally <laughs> occurring. You can find it in North America. It's in Asia. I believe it's in Europe it as well. Years. Yeah, it's been around for a long yeah. time. And that's that's part of the point is like in, in Eastern medicine, uh, it's been used for years and years and years with with for these types of benefits. Um, as, as a lot of, you know, herbs and, and natural medicine, quote unquote medicines are. Um, and again, they've gotten a lot of, Lion's Mane's gotten a lot of, um, attention going back to my statement before about, you know, if there's money to be made on something, you're going to hear a lot about it. So like mushrooms are, have kind of had a moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're, they are like trending. Yeah. They are trending. They're here. They're here. They're here. And they're not, yeah, they've arrived and Man. they're not going anywhere. They've arrived mm. so much that in 2021, it was a $50.3 billion wow. uh, industry. And it's expected to rise 10% year over year um, as we go through up to the minimum of 2030, which is where this projection went through. We talked wow. about like where the supplement industry uh -huh. is going over here. 10% mm -hmm. a year. Right. Think about that <laughs> over uh, the next, let's say, In seven long eight business. Years. No yeah, kidding, man. right? I was yeah. just thinking that. <laughs> right. So, do you know how to grow lion's mane, Stephen? <laughs> uh, not exactly. We're gonna start yeah, hustling. Yeah. We, we gotta hit up uh, so. Paul. Yeah. Paul Red Stamets, dot, the, Red the dot father, lion's mane. father yeah. of Michael Botanicals. He was saying this 25 years ago, and he's like, "I told y'all." Wow. <laughs> told y'all. <laughs> yeah. So Crazy. just real quick and kind of talking about like Eastern medicine and kind of where it's you know kind of how some of these things made their way into. Uh, to being known and how they're being used. I think this is maybe a good point to kind of talk about like, why would you be using these things? I said, okay, who doesn't want to be sharper? You know, obviously who doesn't want brain decay? Mm -hmm. uh, that That's a thing. But when we talk about um, the, the, where we, if we bring it back to sort of our compass is what we like to, whether your goal is to look better. So it's an aesthetic goal or perform better, again, a performance goal, or it's a longevity goal. I just want to be able to, you know, live a higher and better quality of life, get through my day, be active, you know, feel great, not feel sick, um, be vibrant. Uh, I don't care where you fall on that triangle. These types of things can be beneficial for you. And, you know, but at the same time, they're not going to... They're not going to do a thing for you if you don't have your house in order. So if we went back to like the foundation mm -hmm. or the pillars for which our house is set on or should be set on, we look at this stuff, all, we talk about this all the time, and that's the eat squared plus E analogy. That's eating real food, making sure you're getting adequate nutrient or micro and macronutrients. Uh, the, the, this, is, this is an interesting one. T, we brought the T in. T for us now uh, stands for type of diet. It used to, when I first started using this analogy, used to stand for targeted supplementation. Uh, but I switched that out because people, all they wanted to talk about was the fucking supplements when they were eating diets or they're, they're, they're just practicing diets that are very limiting, whether that was 
veganism to carnivore, anything in between. There, there's limitations in or each one of those. Shit, yeah. Yeah. So we had to go back to the eating real food, right? And the first adi- first. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the adequacy of the micro and macronutrients. Because if you're not whatever diet you've chosen matters there in terms of how those other two things are going to be impacted. And it doesn't really matter what I do with the supplements. Supplements are important. We'll bring those in later, but we got to get these things dialed in. So that's an interesting like piece of trivia. And now kind of having you in the room right now sort of reminded me of, of that and that we changed it from targeted supplementation to the type of diet matters. And then we got into sleep and stress management and, and obviously exercise is being a piece. That's the eats T squared plus E. Uh, so that's kind of like our compass and our and our pillars are our foundation for what we need to bring all this stuff back to when we talk about supplements, whether it's nootropics or whatever. Um, and the 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 next digging down piece of this, which I think going back to targeted supplementation, is how, what should you be targeting? Like, what are the things that we should be targeting with our supplements? Everybody wants to get bigger, faster, stronger, right? They want to be leaner, they want to look better naked or whatever. But the reality of it is, is you're not going to have any of those things or you're going to be not functioning as uh, this word gets used a lot, but optimally, if you, if you're not focused on a couple of the main systems within the body, cause they all, the, these are the ones that interact and you refer to that, Stephen, I heard you refer to it as this trifecta. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. I mean, as you know, coming from the supplement industry, spending a lot of time in that industry, just to go back on the eat squared, uh, eat uh, squared plus E, um, I would always tell people, look, I know you're here to buy supplements, but supplements are exactly that. They are supplements. They are supplementing your diet and your exercise. Um, And those two components are going to be pivotal for the trifecta, which is going to be your brain health, your liver health, and your gut health. From, you know, doing a bunch of research over the years, those are the three areas that it seems like everything tends to come back to. And if you can really keep those three areas in order, you really don't have to overcomplicate anything else. A lot of other things will just fall into place. Obviously, the human body, nutrition, diet, it can get just really complicated. People get analysis paralysis. They don't know what to do, especially now because there's infinite amounts of information out there. Too much. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. If you can really just focus on, let me get my brain right, let me get my gut right, let me get my liver right, the rest will fall into place and you don't have to think so hard because the your, your you know, lay person is not, trying to think about this 24 hours a day, seven days a week like us, because I mean, this is what we do, but everybody outside, it's not what they do. Yeah. Just tell me how to get abs, Stephen. That's all. (laughs) Which one of these bottles do I need to buy? Like if you're eating McDonald's every day, you're not sleeping, you're drinking, and you're going to take lion's mane and think it's going to make you like Einstein, (laughs) not fucking happening. Yeah, exactly. That's the point, right? So uh, if you're, if you're working on these other things, these are things that can give you somewhat of an edge, but a small percentage, let's call it 1%. But hey, look at, if I'm looking for all the percentage points I can, like a 1% on an interest rate's massive up or down, right? So, an Olympic athlete? Yeah, 1%? I was just going to say, if you're like a Tom Brady who has yeah. all that shit dialed in, then yeah. maybe. Up, 1% yeah. makes a difference. So, <laughs> so let's not believe that it doesn't or talk about it not mattering. It matters. Absolutely. Uh, or not, not, you know, that it doesn't matter. It does matter. But going back to, to that trifecta in brain, liver, gut, uh, we've talked a lot about the gut on the show. We haven't mm-hmm. talked a lot about the brain, which we're obviously doing now. And the liver is something I want to dig into, but to the gut point, like this lion's mane in mm-hmm. Eastern medicine was being used a long, long time ago to restore gut function. So, uh, and obviously part of this is also brain function too. So, and when we talked about the relationship between the brain and the and gut, the gut, uh, the gut being the, it's been termed the second brain. These are important concepts to understand if you're trying to perform at your best, live at your best and look your best, you know, all the time. So lion's mane is one of those ones, you know, we can kind of close this one off. I just want to go down the, the, the rabbit hole a little bit there on a couple of these things. Another one that's gotten really popular in the last few years, you'll see it in some of the major, you know, brain function or brain, uh, you know, impacting type supplements that are out there. Uh, and so hopefully, you know, a little bit more about it. Again, not a lot of risk in, in taking, taking this supplement. However, it is recommended that if you're breastfeeding, you know, pregnant or breastfeeding, probably not a good idea. We don't know a lot about that. Uh, I, I mean, that's kind of always going to be the disclaimer on yeah, pretty much anything. Yeah, you always anything. want to proceed with caution yeah. anytime someone is pregnant. Yeah, and there's a, there, there is a camp out there that's going, mm, it could be bad for people that have heart disease. 
Um, that's a lot of people in our in the yeah. United States of America right now. So <laughs> just a few, yeah. just to put that out there, uh, because it could interfere with uh, blood clotting. Uh, there's some evidence of that, but that's in people that already had bad hearts or had you know cardiovascular de- disease at some some level. So I you know I like to think that's not the majority of people. Right now, it's not quite the majority of people, but it's a big percentage. Going back to percentage points. Uh, so maybe keep those things in mind, but, but lion's mane's fucking awesome. It's a, it's an awesome, it's an awesome, uh, nootropic. I've used it in several different types of compounds or blends that I've used, um, you know, for various and sundry reasons, whether it be performance or, uh, brain, strictly brain or cognitive performance or athletic performance. And I had, I've had personally some great, some, um, some great experiences with it. Never messed me up. No, yeah. I mean, I think for me personally, longevity is really the area that I'm looking at when it comes to lion's mane. Yep. Um, it's not something that has you know, a lot of, uh, you're not going to quote unquote feel it. It's, it doesn't have uh, like an, an acute uh, uh, sense that you get, but just over time, you know, you just generally function better. So I think that's a big thing to touch on because everyone wants to feel something, right? They mm-hmm. want an they want an immediate like, oh, I know this works. Yeah. It's like you drink coffee, yep. guess what? Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. get an effect. Right. But now they drink the lion's mane. And they're like, well, I hear that it has cognitive effects. And in, like you're saying, like it's not really like, you know, alpha GPC or something like that. But for you taking it yearly, every day for years, right? You're looking for the longevity aspect because of what it does, not the effects that we're looking for to feel. I yeah, think that's man, a big that's one to tap on. Great point, Jeff. Great point. Particularly if you have somebody in your family or know somebody that's close to you that has um, a, literally a decaying brain, you know, somebody that's really, you know, suffering, you know, dementia or just, you know, poor cognitive function. It's tough, man. That is tough to watch. I, that's not a place I want to live. Like, I don't want to, when I say that, I don't, I don't want to be in that situation for myself or for any of the people around me. So anything that I can do. Yeah, pull an old yeah. yeller on me, dude. Yeah. Put me out back and shoot same, me straight man. up. Same. I kind of feel the same. Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah, put me out. If I start losing my marbles, yeah, yeah. Man, we're done. <laughs> so we went um, we went deep on Lions Main because we, we it, that allowed us to go a few different directions. What's next, man? What's on? What what, what else is on your list, sir? Uh, L-tyrosine. Ooh. L-tyrosine was, uh, mm. was one um, that... I feel has uh, very few side effects uh, in comparison to the amount of benefits um, that it provides. So, and it also, uh, you know, wanted to touch on how these uh, nootropic or cognitive enhancing compounds can come from different sources. Um, L-tyrosine is derived from the essential amino acid uh, phenylalanine. So this is something that you're getting, uh, phenylalanine is, uh, anytime you're uh, consuming any time of a complete protein source. Um, and L-tyrosine is really nice for a few different things, but the primary benefit I would say is how it drives dopamine production. So it's going to enhance your mood and motivation. Yeah. Who doesn't like dopamine? Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone's it, chasing it. Chasing it. All day long. <laughs> what, on the whether they know chase, it or not, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. on the dopamine train. I mean, mm-hmm. where I'm addicted to the shit, you know, like I love it. Uh, uh, you get, you can, can get I it get some? lots of different ways, You're right? You're programmed to love it. I was going to yeah. say, it sounds like something that, um, some females could take during certain times of the month for mood. Yeah, for yeah, sure. a little bit of mood. Yeah, a little bit of mood enhancement. Yeah, lift up the the motivation if there's a little bit of a uh, sluggishness. Happening. Red dot mm-hmm. clinical study coming soon. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, a human. Te- we're going straight to human. Testing. All right, uh, sign me up. On that end. Yeah, so when we, when we talk about dopamine, we talk about like norepinephrine and the feeling that we get from that, and that people are chasing that. And you can get those the releases of that or those st- those things to be stimulated through lots of different things. You can get it through exercise. You can get it through um, certain emotional things. I mean, let's just say that those those chemicals are part of emotional states. You mentioned mood swings or, you know, mood just enhancement. Mood enhancement. And, and, and enhancing certain moods, you can get it. Through, I think I mentioned that I mentioned, if I didn't already mention certain foods. Um, uh, uh, those those are the things that we all love, right? Those Those two things. So if we can basically do two things. One, reduce the amount of stress that we have that restricts the release of uh, dopamine and, and norepinephrine, that's a plus. So that's part of what the L-tyrosine will do, will help you combat those stressful situations. So it's not that it's releasing these things, right? It's part of the, it's part of the schematic, right? And in the, in this, this process of how do these things get released in your body and what role does L-tyrosine play? And basically it'll help you be... If, 
effectively a little bit more resistant to the stress. Yeah, because you're producing more of the stress hormone. Correct. To have it, the, the epinephrine and the norepinephrine. Yes. So as you get into the the the. So it's like a balance. It is a yeah. So yeah, I don't want to. Okay. Because this, they they say basically uh, when your body is under stress, mm-hmm. right? Um, your cortisol levels and. Well, the elevated. body, yeah, the body isn't able to make enough tyrosine. Right. So then if you're taking it, it's yes. augmenting yeah. that. But they say it's very rare for you to be low in it as well. Correct. It's just a matter of like, what do you have on board, right? Mm, and, exactly. and And how is your body, what is your body doing to alleviate this acute stress that you might be feeling? And that includes working out, right? That, inclu- that includes the, well, the environment. Well, it builds proteins, right? What's so, that? The tyrosine. So if we're building proteins with this amino acid as well. So it's part of a complete protein. So it's something that is essential, yeah. right? So you're and building things. You're going to have less of that as well. The, I see what you're, I see what you're like tying it into in terms of the right? muscle building, exactly. muscle building components and protein synthesis and, and so forth. Yeah, I, 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 you could probably credit it there as well. But it, it basically, you're, if you're alleviating this, this acute stress, right, then what you more frequently or and it's more regulated, then you can reduce this decline in cognitive function that's going to happen over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one of the things we know that will reduce that dramatically is exercise, right? Cognitive decline. You got to stay. You got to stay fresh. Reading, being social. Those are all things that being. Be, you know, keeping up on your just trying to get educated on something new, a new skill, a new yeah. task, something like that. But but the point of this is, is if you can reduce the amount of this acute stress at the time that you're feeling it, or the, excuse me, the, the reactions that this acute stress has on you at the time that you're getting this acute stress, you reduce this long-term cognitive decline. And and that's, that's really where L-tyrosine sort of comes into the, comes into play there. Kind of preventing death by a thousand tiny cuts. There you go. It's a really good, it's really good. That's a fucking great analogy. Uh, Yeah. uh, yeah, Life, uh, life chips away at us (laughs) over time. And it, it, uh, Again, like the like the benefits of some of these uh, of some of these nootropics we're talking about, it it you know you can have compounding detrimental effects over time. Yeah, and we we're seeing that you know kind of every day. So you know out there, you mentioned the people that you see out there with decaying brains. We <laughs> we we mentioned it, but it's just like I we've used this term on the show before, and that's just people that just don't have the bandwidth anymore. Mm-hmm. That bandwidth has a lot to do with cognitive ability. Uh, yes. Critical thinking skills are all about cognitive ability, right? Your ability to make decisions, your decision-making ability, your ability to handle stressful or make uh, decisions under stress uh, is uh, is all part of this. So again, L-tyrosine is part of your complete protein makeup in terms of the amino acid profile that goes into you know what you'll find in in animal-based proteins versus uh, uh, vegetable or pl- let's say plant-based proteins, um, they're not the same. <laughs> your complete proteins are going to be your animal-based proteins. We know that. Uh, you, there's uh, the, the, there's no debating that anymore. Yeah, so yeah, you, you're going to have to mix and match amino acid profiles to get a complete amino your, acid. Your body doesn't make this one. Yeah. yeah, your body yeah. doesn't make this one. So mm-hmm. unless you're getting it from mm-hmm. your diet, right, or through supplement targeted supplementation, mm-hmm. you are you're you're missing you're, out. You're missing out. That's it. That's exactly it. All right, man, what's yeah. next? Uh, next, we have uh, ginkgo biloba. Uh, um, this is one everybody's heard before, man. Like, <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Today, before today, not a, I'd never heard of it. So no? I, so I want to hear about oh. it. Well, are you serious? We're here Dude, learning. Well, I'm things. shocked. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm shocked. I think the first time it's, I heard about it was in grad it's school. It's not ginseng, right? No. Oh, no, right. Right. no but I think they're similar as far as like what they can do as far as like um, memory. If I'm yeah, well, they, let's yeah, see, let's hear. Yeah, they do have yeah. they do have some some similar. So, so okay, so but my friend Chris in grad school, I remember she was um, taking some ginkgo, but her thing was trying to remember to take the ginkgo. <laughs> <laughs> she we'll needs come back to ginkgo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we talk about adapt. It's more of an adaptogen than a nootropic, and that oh, that's true. Okay, that adaptogen talks happening on one of our other podcasts because we'll talk about that specifically as they compare and contrast against nootropics because it's not quite the same. Um, but that is funny. Like you're taking the ginseng or the ginkgo uh, to help with cognitive function and you can't remember to take your <laughs> cognitive function supplement. That's funny. But uh, yeah, the uh, as far as ginkgo, uh, primary mechanism of action is just increasing cerebral blood flow. Um, so 
The more blood you can get to your brain, the more nutrients are going to get to your brain, the better your brain is going to function. So Is that nootropics in general? Uh, they do have some different uh, mechanisms of action. Um, for example, like we discussed with the lion's mane, that is going to have an effect on uh, neurogenesis, the creation mm-hmm. of new bra- uh, brain cells, as well as pro- protecting the ones that you do have. Mm-hmm. Um, L-tyrosine is more of like a neurotransmitter modulator. We have these chemical signals that are taking place in our brain every day. Um, so some nootropics are going to uh, uh, act on those neurotransmitters. Uh, ginkgo biloba is just more blood to your dome and makes it work better. Uh, it's also beneficial for blood pressure as well. It increases yeah. blood flow all over the place. I mean, this should make pretty good sense to most people. Like if I get more of a better circulation, mm-hmm. things are better. I mean, whether we're talking about, you know, cardiovascular training or cardiovascular, you know, conditioning, or we're, we're talking about brain function, it's still all supplied, all those nutrients, all of those, the good stuff. And in terms of oxygen. getting to where it needs to yeah. be, yeah, yeah, oxygen, nutrients, mm-hmm. all of those things going in. And then also the bad stuff coming out because the bloodstream acts as that pathway in order to get that stuff out into yeah. the filtration Recycling systems. waste products. Yeah. Going back to the liver, right? Mm-hmm. And how important that is because, okay, I'm getting the things in and I'm pulling the things back out. They got to go through that big filter called the liver. And if that thing isn't working right, I might just be sending the crap right back to where it, where it came from, which is obviously counterproductive. Um, and that's, that's very reductive, but at the same time, that's what we were talking about. When we were going back to that trifecta, mm-hmm. uh, and the circulatory benefits of this, uh, as it relates to gut liver brain, super important. And then obviously trickling down to performance, longevity, or aesthetics. Um, I think you've hit a big one on the head with the circulatory, you know, because if you're sitting there and you, you're not getting good blood flow, mm-hmm. it's basically stagnant. You have stagnant water. You have mm-hmm. just wa- sitting water. And what happens to sitting water? It gets you gross. Get mosquitoes. You get gross. Yeah. <laughs> you call it doo doo water. You don't yeah. drink out of that, right? Yeah. You look no. for moving water, right? Yeah, so. call it doo doo water. I mean, you get <laughs> things start growing in it. Yeah, exactly. It looks, it looks bad. It stinks, yep. mm-hmm. right? It's all, all those kind of things. That's a really good way of looking at it. So if you're not moving, right, and you're stagnant and you don't have good circulation, that's end of any basically your your circulatory system, your brain, and all the things that 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 circulatory system supplies the stuff with becomes that stinky bog, right? Yep. So again, a little bit reductive, but at the same time, I think it paints a pretty clear picture. Here's a couple of things about ginkgo that I learned because it came out. This has been popular for a long time, probably as long when I say popular, just kind of well known as long as I've been in this business, right? Which is over 25 years now. Uh, I wasn't paying any attention to it before. Why? Because I was a kid. Like, mm-hmm. and and this this came up in the the, the medical field uh, that there was some research done around this that middle aged people were seeing some cognitive uh, benefit by taking this stuff in sort of middle age. Uh, and obviously, those middle aged people, are the people with the money, those people, are the ones that fund the studies, and so this thing kind of took off like wildfire. And then it actually showed improvement for people that had dementia because they're like, well, if it works good for you know this working middle-aged person, like what if we did some studies and we gave it to people that are really suffering, you know, or having this brain decay for lack of a better term, right? And there was some benefit that was that was studied and, and recorded there. There's not a lot of studies or benefit that, that can be, you know, I guess, again, no peer-reviewed studies that say that taking this as a younger person, and I've this is very general in terms of what's middle-aged and what isn't, but, but you know, Will it help a younger person? Uh, we don't know that, but there's also like, you don't feel like you need to take it then. And, you know, it's not first on your list. The thing that's first on your list when you're, you know, in your late teens, 20s, you know, or maybe even your early 30s is what I want to look at naked. Give me fucking abs. Gains. Yeah, gains, dude. <laughs> so they're not thinking this way. But to your point, going all the way back to the alpha um, and the, the or sorry, the lion's mane, this is something you could be adding into your system right now that's, Again, it's not going to hurt you. There is not any risk associated with this we know of. And there's been a lot of studies going back to what I was saying. It's been studied for a long time. Uh, you can start taking this now to help with that cognitive yeah. function. Yeah. I'm 31. I take it every day. Yeah. been taking it every day. It's actually in the same product that I use religiously that has, has the lion's, lion's mane, mane as well. Yeah. Has a, 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 you know, a, a brain support uh, complex in it and has ginkgo, sunflower lecithin, and the lion's mane. And I take it. Every single day. Yeah. So it's, there's a formulation there is what mm-hmm. we'll call that. Yeah. And going back to the, if you guys, if you guys <laughs> listen to the, uh, 
to the podcast I did with um, Brian Littlefield out at uh, Jocko, Jocko Field headquarters, we talked a lot about sunflower lecithin mm. and uh, the benefits there and why that one versus others and other lecithin like soy. soy. Um, <laughs> and so when you're taking these products, looking at what are they coming up, what are they onboarded with? You know, what is it? Very important. Effectively, what is the delivery system? In this case, it's the soy, or, excuse me, the, the uh, sunflower lecithin. Um, anyway, without getting too far off track, you can listen to more about that on that on that podcast with Brian Littlefield. Um, yeah, so going back to Ginkgo, awesome. I, I think the, the last thing I want to come back to before we wrap this up is you mentioned at the beginning, racetams. Mm -hmm. um, and, and CC, you asked about SARMs. Let's talk mm -hmm. about racetams because this is probably a little less known and something that I think people need to be aware of. Um, and I'm just going to say it up front, just be cautious of as we go down the line here. Because again, I said this before, if there's money to be made and the supplement industry is a massive one, uh, you get really need to be careful because if somebody feels like they can find an edge here in terms of reducing costs and improving margins, they're going to do that all day long. And this is not a highly regulated industry. So talk about racetams. Uh, yeah, so racetams similar to SARMs, as I mentioned, are uh, more or less at this point failed research chemicals. They were, th these are pharmaceuticals. These are synthetic. There is nothing organic about any of these. Um, they are uh, they are pharmaceuticals and they were developed, you know, to try to combat things like dementia, like Alzheimer's and somewhere along the way in the clinical trials, they, you know, didn't cut the mustard. They, uh, you know, were, were dropped. Um, they still crop up though. Um, somehow, uh, you know, some maybe less than savory, um, manufacturers that or what a, great, what a great way <laughs> what, a nice, what a nice guy <laughs> hey you know uh you know they're, they're just out there trying to make a buck um and might uh cook your brain um but th these ones are you they're more potent basically because they are pharmaceutical based these would be closer to that nzt this you know the yeah. the the mythological drug from the limitless movie um <laughs> where you are going to experience a, a pretty potent effect um I may or may not have dabbled in a few of them myself, uh, just to see, okay. um, we'll call it, you know, biohacking in the name of biohacking. Um, I hate that term. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's pretty goofy, but they, they primarily are going to act on, <laughs> they primarily are going to act on, um, uh, on your neurotransmitters, particularly, uh, glutamate, um, mm -hmm. which directly related to glutamine that folks might be a little more, uh, familiar little with, more familiar yeah. with uh, and acetylcholine as well. Um, so there's a few different ones they have, you know, uh, there's aniracetam, oxiracetam, phenylpyracetam. There's, there's quite a few of them. Um, but you're not going to find these on the shelves at a supplement store because their legality is okay. in question. Gotcha. Uh, it might come from overseas. So that's where you start, uh, you know, wondering what yeah. is in this? I really don't know. I really don't know where this came from. These really aren't quite legal, but they're not quite illegal either. Nope. So, you know. Can I ask a personal yeah. question? Mm -hmm. um, what were you trying to get out of it? What were you, I mean, looking for when you were experimenting? Think more good. <laughs> think, more good. <laughs> think, think more better. Yeah. My knuckles <laughs> more off the ground. Think more gooder. <laughs> I mean, I was actually, I was kind of inspired by the, by the Limitless movie. And I was like, wouldn't that be awesome if I could just learn at the speed of light, if I could just pick up an instrument and just start playing it. I just wanted to see how far I could kind of push my, my cognitive ability, how, how, you know, verbal fluidity, um, memory, concentration, all that good stuff. I mean, was there any markedly, I mean... Can you talk Different about it? things. Yeah. I mean, what'd you what'd you get? Yeah, I mean, they they can work. You know, it's getting. This was a few years ago that I first started. Uh, you know, to experiment with these, um, and I think maybe over the last couple of years, the challenges in getting raw materials um, have led to maybe a decline in the effectiveness and the availability. Mm -hmm. If you sense. just do like an internet search, these are getting harder and harder to get um, because they do typically come from overseas. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you definitely can get locked in. You can get very much locked in, but there is a fine line, um, where you, you know, more is definitely not always better mm -hmm. and you take a little too much, you mix it with an, a stimulant like caffeine. Mm -hmm. Now I have anxiety. Yeah, now yeah, I'm yeah. a now I'm jittery. Now I have a headache. 
Um, and they can be uh, dependence forming or tolerance. You can build yeah. a tolerance. There yeah. definitely is. You, if you take them for you know an extended period of time, the effects start to plateau. They need to be cycled. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I did not know that yeah. uh, the last part, is, uh, especially. But I would imagine, and I don't know because I don't use um, pre workout at all and anymore. I just don't. And I, but for a while there, I was using like stim. Uh, pre workout. I had some non stim stuff, but I was like, why the fuck am I taking this? Like, it, I didn't like <laughs> for vasodilation, bro. Vasodilation. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. if, 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 my, if my ears aren't and my lips aren't itching and my face doesn't feel like oh, it's going to blow up, you're not working out. You're not getting yeah. sounds. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but my point of that is, is like, I assume, I would assume like these, these, these guys that are making this crazy pre, you know, pre workouts right now, stim pre work, uh, pre workouts with stim. They're tr they're putting this stuff in there. I mean, I'm sure there's brands out there that are doing it uh, because of how potent it is. And I mean, like in this industry, particularly in the sub industry, more is better, right? I mean, that's always been the. It's not really, but that's the thing. It's like more is always better. So if a little bit's good, like if I just you know let me double down, uh, that'll be better. And by the way, I'm on gear, and you know I'm doing all these other things. So like I can handle a little bit more. I should do a little bit more. That's one of the things with gear, right? <laughs> you can do so much more with you know than the person that's not on it. Uh, that's the point. So I would imagine the stuff's in there. Have you heard any reports of this? Um, well, the one that not not racetams per se, but uh, it's called a uh, Nopept. So that's N O O P E P T. I have seen that in some pre workouts. Yeah. Um, that actually has had some promising research in terms of not necessarily being um, harmful for you. Um, similar to Lion's Mane, it can uh, uh, increase uh, BDNF and yeah. neurogenesis. Um, but again, it's kind of the same thing. You know, more is not necessarily better. And in some pre-workout, like you, you have no idea if there's actually any no pept in there. Um, yeah, the big one, two amino right now. Yep. Hectane. Yeah, we've seen that one. That, that one yeah. pop up. Yeah, but that's oh, yeah. the one three dimethyl re. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, DMHA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, more or less the same stuff. But, yeah, but yeah, that stuff a, is uh, yeah. that, that'll have you on. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I'm I, a fan. <laughs> so my thing is, I think people are playing around with these things, like you just mentioned. You know, you experiment a little bit. I don't think there's. You know, I think people should do that. They should, they should, they should get out there and do that. They should be cautious. Proceed should, with caution, absolutely. Yeah, yeah like, but make, they should do that. They try should, to vet your sources as best as you possibly can. But yeah. to Jeff's point, when you go out there and you do that, don't expect to take, you know, a couple of capsules, you know, or, you know, mix it into your, to your protein shake or whatever, and they expect to feel like, uh, you know, this movie, right? <laughs> yeah. the, it's like, like the Bradley Cooper. Who, like Bradley it's like Cooper. the people who microdose uh, psychedelic mushrooms. Same. Like, are you going to have a hallucination? No. no. You're not even supposed to feel anything. So yeah, it's there's a there's the the poison is in the dose. Generally speaking, you know when we when we look at these these types of things, but going out there and experimenting is probably a good idea if you're interested in doing that. We've gone through a bunch of them. Look, nootropics are there. Cognitive brain function, hopefully, uh, slowing down the process of cognitive decline, certainly can help you perform and feel better. Uh, you know, like you. If you're, you know, if you're, you're walking in, if you're a student or if you're walking into like an educational type of format, like I have used some new terms. I'm not going to mention brands on here because I'm not going to promote anybody, but there is one particular brand that I have <laughs> taken, uh, quite a few times and I was using it pretty religiously at a time where I was really stressed, really stressed this is during COVID. And I will, I will tell you, uh, after a few weeks of this, uh, kind of getting through it and understanding what I was feeling on it versus what I was feeling when I wasn't. When I say on it, let's just say taking it. Um, when I was when I was feeling that, I could tell there was a major fucking difference, major difference, and with no adverse side effects. Uh, that no being crash, right? no yeah. crash, no feeling shitty, no getting stomach issues, just putting in work. No let, dude. Like <laughs> just <laughs> my ma my mouth was in front of my brain. Like it was mm -hmm. I was I thought I it was wild. Like it was kind of I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Wild like. Everything was on point. You mentioned that, you know, trying to bring that word forward that's on the tip of your tongue. Yeah. No such thing. I need to start these, doing that. On these nootropics, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, also if you're like, we're personal trainers or we're going and we're trying to teach somebody, you know, we had an instructor out at CRW that was having a hard time. I gave him some nootropics. Yeah. And afterwards, he was like, dude, what was that? Yes. Where can I buy it? Like, <laughs> thank like, you so much. Yeah. Like, you know, these people, crackhead. These people want to deliver, yeah. you know, and if your brain's not there and you're not willing to give what, you know, you're there to give. 
I, I think that's fair to say too, is that it could be used as a, as an aid at, at times where you are behind and know you're behind, right? Uh, we were a good example. I opened up talking about the trips that we were on, the training that we were doing, how fatigued we were getting for all kinds of reasons. There were a lot of hours in the day. There was not as much sleep as we would typically get. We were way underfed uh, and we were being very active, right? So it, going into those situations and knowing you're going into those, you're going to that three-day work conference, right? Where you've got to be switched on. If you've got to be standing in front of people, giving that TED talk or yep. uh, teaching that new thing and, uh, you know, getting up the next morning and being social and whatever else from the business, you know, perspective, like that could be very, very, these things could be very helpful for, for you. I've experienced that myself, but also as it, as it comes to kind of your day-to-day -day and feeling like you're connected in there just having that confidence and that sense of well-being can, man, you can get a lot of mileage out of that too. So I yeah, I think That's a cool. lot of, I mean, that we didn't quite touch on that. You alluded to it just now. Sometimes people are taking these, uh, these nootropics for uh, just extroversion, mm -hmm. just to be yes. more socially uh, active, uh, more socially effective, mm -hmm. um, you know, say, uh, businessman or woman who needs to be doing some networking, needs to be shaking a lot of hands, kissing a lot of babies, mm. uh, that can be depleting. That can be, uh, you know, uh, oh, mentally, yeah. mentally mm -hmm. exhausting just to be doing a lot of chatting and trying to come off as intelligent or charming or, yep. you know, whatever the case may be. So, um, or if you have some type of um, uh, anxiety towards social situations, uh, some of these compounds can uh, help bring you a level of confidence that you might not normally have. Yep. And like, oh, wow, I'm, you know, I got the silver tongue now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm real cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think not everybody, but a lot of people could benefit from having a little bit more self-confidence. And if that means because you gain that confidence because you feel a little sharper, whether that's fucking placebo or not, mm -hmm. like, yeah. That's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, just puts you in a better position. You're probably going to have, going back to your, what Cece said earlier about increased mood. Uh, if I feel a little sharper, if, I, if I'm not struggling in this particular situation, I'm probably just going to be a better human, right? At least I think we could make some assumptions <laughs> there. But uh, yeah, so lots of different applications for this. I mean, we talk about the health and fitness stuff all the time. I mean, Jeff, for all those shooters out there, <laughs> think about this, mm -hmm. you know, before you... <laughs> Before you go and you dry fire, you go out yep. to the range or whatever, and how these oh, things man. could help you. you dialed in. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, if we go back to our Tony Ryan, you know, and, and him being out here, Tony was on the show and also in the gym and going through some, you know, how to improve brain function, that brain mapping, yep. that taking in uh, effort information and giving it back and the afferent information and how to respond to that, whether that be in reducing pain, increasing your performance, just increasing that, that sense of well-being. Uh, these are those things that can kind of help and tweak, you know, give you that one percentage point that you may need to, which is the difference between winning and losing, mm -hmm. right? Or uh, or succeeding yep. or failing. So, man, Stephen, that was awesome, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing. I can't wait to hear more from you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Looking forward to sharing much, much more. And uh, yeah, everybody, get your brain sharp, mm -hmm. but start with your diet. Start with your exercise. Yep. Save the pills and powders are third. Hey, sounds good. <laughs>